So here we are at the final day of the first ever virtual Road to California show. Today's demonstrations are going to focus on the tools that we've developed to deal with these long skinny points that aren't 45 degrees. These are points that are going to add sparkle to your quilting project. And you're going to discover how easy they are to create and add to your projects. So keep your habit wanted list nearby. And remember, we are offering a show special. To learn all about those details, you're going to want to visit our website, but this is going to be your golden opportunity to fulfill that have it, want it list. Now the next two tools I'm going to introduce you to are my V-block and corner beam. And these two tools create shapes that add real sparkle and pizzazz to your quilting projects. And let me outline what they do. The V-block creates squares that have two seams from the corner to the center and the corner to the center. The corner beam creates squares that have two seams from the corner to the center and the corner to the center. And they are indeed totally different blocks, which is why I have two different tools. But the tools look the same because the side triangle that's on this shape and the side triangle that's on this shape, they have the same angle, which is what I'm cutting from that edge of the tool. So these are self-contained tools. They have all the um, guidelines that you need to be able to cut all the parts of the, the different blocks. The V block does 11 sizes from one inch finished units up to and including six inch finished units. And the corner beam also has 11 sizes from one inch all the way up to the six inch finish sizes. And let me talk about these one at a time. The V block has guidelines and angled edge that you use to cut that center triangle out of strips a little bigger than it needs to be. It has a different set of guidelines here and guidelines here along with the angled edge that you use to cut the side triangles. And what happens is you'll create that unit slightly oversized and then the magic happens. You get to trim it down and clean it up. And when I set that up with the guidelines for the three inch finished unit that I'm creating, I line up the three at the base of the unit and clean it up. And what happens, I don't know if you can quite see this, but the tool places it so that the future quarter of an inch seams meet right there. That's what gives you points on those units when they're put into a project. And after I make the first trim, lift the tool, rotate this around, and put my cleanup lines there with an X up at the top, and trim this to a high precision unit with all the seams being properly placed. And never forget, all of my tools have those instructions for cutting right-handed as well as left-handed on the process. Now the, v, the corner beam does pretty much the same thing. Once I've created the shape, I'm going to have it oversized. When I go to trim it down, I'm trim the pointy end first. If I'm right-handed, I happen to put the pointy end in the upper right-hand corner. If I were left-handed, I'd put it in the upper left-hand corner. But when I position this for trimming and position the guidelines, the patented lines that are on the tool over top and trim that corner, it's going to create a perfect point in my project because I'm trimming it to the exact place that it needs to be. Lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees. When I reposition this, not only do I have the cleanup lines, my three and a half cut size for a three inch finished unit, but I have registration marks here at the three to know that I'm making a three inch finished unit. And I have a couple of registration marks out at the end right here that allow me to fine tune that alignment just a little bit and end up with blocks that are exactly the right size with seams in exactly the right place and if I happen to be putting the two of those together like this or like this you know they're going to meet and they're going to match. So if you notice these units in a pattern that you're doing and it might have you building these with um, either templates or with paper foundation piecing think about picking these tools up 11 sizes I've yet to need any sizes more than I have in either the V block 
or the corner beam. And please also notice that all of my tools have that little icon on them so that they're easy to figure out which one. This is the tool for the corner beam, this shape. This is the tool for the V-block and that shape. So take a look at some of the projects we've created and think about adding these to your toolbox. I know most of you realize that Studio 180 Design is a fantastic tool company. We have great patterns, both modern and traditional. We have books. We have techniques and processes that can't be beat. But did you know that we are also very closely linked to the Island Batik Company? For the last several years, as they were introducing new fabric lines, we were invited to create projects to showcase these lines. And if you'd like to check out some of those patterns that we created to go along with those fabric lines, visit our website and check out the Island Batik section. And Conversely, if you get to a quilt shop and you see an Island Batik collection, come directly to us to pick up some of those great patterns and great tools for making those incredible quilts. Now, have you ever wanted to make a storm at sea quilt? You know, it's a quilt that's on a lot of people's bucket list and every storm at sea quilt requires two basic shapes to be able to build them. It requires squares that have a square set on point in the middle and it requires rectangles that have a diamond in the middle. The square squared is the tool that I created to deal with this shape. Again, if you recall, it has uh, window templates to precision cut the center. It has a chart for cutting the triangles around it that are going to be oversized and then it has a trim down section that allow me to trim that up and clean it to exactly the right size and shape. Well the Diamond Rex has that same type of building philosophy but it's got a few more steps to it. It has a window template section that allows me to precision cut the diamond shape and I precision cut that out of fabric strips and then it also has window templates on the tool to cut those elongated triangles and you cut those out of pairs of rectangles so that when you build the unit it's purposely oversized allowing me to come back and trim it down and clean it up and the trim down section has X's on it just like on the square squared that when I position the proper X's over top of the sewn seams centers the tool over the shape. Two by four is what I'm doing, so I'm putting those X's right over top of the seams that are already sewn and already pressed. Trim the unit so it's square and clean. I think I may have rolled that a little bit. And the seams are properly placed. Lift the tool, rotate that unit. And for me, as a right-hander, I'm gonna place those same X's on there, but I'm orienting this vertically for me. The same X's and the cleanup lines giving me a perfectly sized unit. But remember, these tools are just as easy to use if you're left-handed. A left-hander, instead of a vertical arrangement, you would simply place that unit horizontally, place the same guidelines on there so that you can easily trim up the left and across the top. So if Storm at Sea is something that you want to do, you're going to want to add the Square Squared tool and the Diamond Rex tool to your lineup to give you building blocks that are the right size so that, that those quilts are going to end up being better constructed in the end. Enjoy the quilt show that we have that feature the Diamond Rex tool.
you know, quilters, if you ask any craftsman, if you ask any guy about tools, they're all going to say exactly the same thing. The right tool for the job makes your job easier. Well, I believe that's a true statement, and that's why we have created tools for you as quilters. These quilt tools are going to make your quilt construction easier than you ever thought possible. And all of the tools have built-in value, not only with the number of sizes that you can create with all the different tools, but with the fine lines that give you high precision, with the illustrated instructions so that you can use the tools right-handed or left-handed, and those free educational videos that you'll have access to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But, you know, there are also uh, a group of very highly qualified individuals that are our certified instructors. We have more than 100 scattered throughout this country and throughout Canada and, and, and uh, around the world. And these are instructors that you can find out about by visiting our website, contacting someone who might be near to you, and invite them to your shop, to your guild, to conduct a workshop or a lecture. Invite them to a retreat and spend a number of days learning how to use all these tools with hands-on instructions. And, you know, while you're at our website, why don't you take a minute and subscribe to our newsletter or and also join our Facebook page so that you're going to be able to keep up with all the developments that we are creating here at Studio 180 Design. But do not hesitate to add these tools to your toolbox. You know, rookies, this is going to bring a level of success to your work that you would have had to struggle for years to get to. And those of you who are veteran quilters and have tried making some of these blocks and units with other tools that are out there, you're going to find that they're going to collect dust and these are the only tools you're going to want to pull out in your process. You're going to get a level of success that you never thought possible. You're going to be thrilled with how easy they are to use and the quality of your projects when you're done are going to astound you and all of your friends. So again, don't hesitate, start adding these tools to your toolbox and you'll be glad that you did. Our split rex is another one of our fundamental tools and it's designed to build rectangles. Rectangles that are divided diagonally from corner to corner with a seam. Everything that you need is included right on the tool. The angled edge is what you use to cut the elongated triangles slightly bigger than they need to be so that then you can trim them down and clean them up. And there are sizes ranging on the tool from one half by one inch, little itty bitty ones, all the way up to four inches by eight inches. And you know, if you cut those elongated triangles from strips, yellow and blue, that are facing each other, you'll actually end up with mirror image units. And you can trim both those units with one tool. You don't have to buy two separate tools to do that. All the guidelines are right on the tool. If you're trimming down the unit that happens to have the seam going in this direction, you would set it up horizontally, if you're right-handed, and you would set it up vertically if you're left-handed. And what you would be using is what we call the common diagonal. Placing that over top of the seam and trimming on this corner is going to perform the magic. It's going to place that seam properly so that when you stitch those future quarter of an inch lines, you actually get to keep the points. What a novel idea that is, points on your projects. But I'll trim the first corner, rotate this around, and trim the opposite corner so that every unit is exactly the right size. But if you're working with that mirror image shape, and these two are mirror images of each other, when I place that on my board, you'll notice that the scene goes in the opposite direction. So you can't use that common diagonal. Well, you could. If you flip this unit over, you can continue to use that diagonal guideline on the seam line and trim those down. But you also have the option of looking at the diagonal sizing guidelines that you can place on there for making the two inch by four inch unit and do the trim and it will give you units that have those seams properly placed to give you points. Now we're really excited because just recently we've introduced a technique sheet for the split rex tool. And the technique sheet um, is going to take you above and beyond that simple 
one seam rectangle to rectangles that are divided by two seams or rectangles that are divided by a seam and a half. Um, we don't have a project for these yet, but we can't wait to start putting these in some of our future designs. And speaking of designs, why don't you take a look at some of the quilts we've created using the Split Rex tool. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you to our series of Corner Pop tools, the original Corner Pop and the Corner Pop 2 and the Corner Pop 3. And if you're not familiar with them, I'm going to start with the Corner Pop 1 and explain what this tool is all about. Uh, there's a method out there that most of you have probably tried in your quilting process that uh, I call folded corners. You might know it as snowball corners. And it's where you take and you place a small square in the corner of a large square. You mark on the diagonal, you stitch on the diagonal, and fold a square back into place. And I don't know whether you're better at that than I am, but I know if I were putting on four corners to make a snowball block, one would be too short, one would be too long, one would be wonky, and one would be right. Oh, my success rate was just horrible with that. So I created the corner pop tool to give me a better chance of getting pieces that are the right size, in the right place, and getting a better success rate. So the Corner Pop 1 tool has patented guidelines on it that you will use when you place over the corner of the base shape. And the patented guidelines are designed to trim away a corner that you don't need, but they're designed to leave the quarter of an inch seam that you do need on the base shape. So then I can do what I like to do, which is place an oversized triangle in there, completely overfill the corner, and then come back with the trim down lines that are on the tool and clean up the edges so that I have a better chance of having things the way they need to be, to be able to meet and match other pieces and other units. And we introduced that tool uh, several years ago, and we've recently released what we call the Corner Pop 2 and Corner Pop 3 that have that same philosophy of trimming away a corner, leaving the quarter of an inch seam, allowing me to add an oversized triangle, and then trim it down. But the replacement triangles have a different angle. If you're working with the Corner Pop 1, realize that your replacement triangles will be in a, what we call a one-to-one -one ratio. They're going to be equal. If this is two inches, then this is two inches. If you work with the Corner Pop 2 tool, what will happen is you'll put on a triangle that's twice as tall as it is wide at the base. So if this is two inches, this will be four inches. And if you work with the Corner Pop 3, that will give you a much taller, thinner triangle. If this is two, this is gonna be six inches. And this is the tip of the iceberg. You can add replacement triangles, not just to simple squares, but you can add them to other shapes and other pieces that have 90 degree angles. And then you can start to multiply and add, do a corner pop three and then add a corner pop two and add a corner pop one. As designers, we really enjoy having the opportunity to create very unique, very different type projects very quickly and very easily. The project that you, have, that you see behind me is just one of the patterns and one of the projects that we've got with these tools. Take a few minutes and see some of the other patterns that we've created for the Corner Pop 2 and the Corner Pop 3.
I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce to you a dear friend of mine, Marie Boswick, and let you know about a quilting collaboration that we've been involved with for most of the last 15 years. Now, Marie is indeed a very fine quilter, but that's probably not how you know her. Marie is actually a New York Times best-selling author, and she's the originator of the Cobbled Court series of quilting novels. And we actually met at a quilting retreat about 15 years ago, became instant friends, and soon after started discussing how we could work together to create quilts that went along with her novels. And so for most of the last 15 years, we've done just that. Every spring when Marie releases a book, um, I create two projects that are closely connected to the theme or one of the characters in the book. One of the projects is a simple project that I give to Marie for her to post on her website and we also post on our website that's free to any of you who may be interested. And I also create patterns for larger projects, for full-size quilts, that you're going to be able to create and remind you of how wonderful the story was that you were reading. And you know, there's, the collaboration continues. Next spring, be on the lookout for not just another great novel from Marie, but also for quilting designs and projects from Studio 180 Design. So here we are at the end of the first ever Virtual Road to California show. I've had a lot of fun. I'm glad you were able to join us. And you know, if you'd like to see more in-depth information about anything that we've shown over the last couple of days, please visit our website, watch our step-by-step -step video tutorials. They'll walk you through all the parts that we kind of skimmed over in some of the demonstrations. And you know, while you're at our website, why don't you join our newsletter? Join us on Facebook so that as we introduce new products, new tools, you'll be among the first to know. I had a great time. I'm hoping to see you all again in real life very, very soon.